faith is restored and spiritual wealth is on its way on this week's episode of The High Priestess. Greetings, everyone. I'm Obleron, the Lord of Love and the Magister of the Cube. Thank you for joining me on today's Elemental Sinistry reading. It is a technique that I devise which uses the tarot, astrology, and the five elements. This is a reading which transcends space and time, so if you resonate with this at any point watching this, then this message is for you. Okay, so let's begin with the element of spirit, which is represented by the bell. So the tarot cards influence the spirit, and the astrology die offer the advice or the outcome. Okay, so let's see what's happening in the realm of the spirit. Ooh, all right. So we have an inverted, an inverted Lord of Material Trouble. It is the Five of Pentacles, and it usually means that faith has been restored, or we are... We are over our period of poverty. And the interesting thing about pentacles is that it can represent spiritual wealth as, as well as material wealth. So spirit is basically saying that the hard times are coming to an end. Uh, it's not quite over yet because it is still in the spirit realm and we still have to make the effort to manifest that in the lower realms in which we live. So let's see what the astrology die have to say. Okay, we got Mars in Sagittarius in the 12th house. Let me move these over. So Mars in Sagittarius in the 12th house. Okay. So I roll first for the house and then I roll second for the decan. Ah, 12 again, so that is the third Deccan. So the third Deccan of Sagittarius is the Lord of Oppression. It's guided by Saturn. It's the, the, the burden of ambition. And what this is trying to tell us, especially with it being in the 12th house of, which is ruled by Pisces, is that we're looking at an ending. An ending to Again, it sort of reiterates the ending of spiritual poverty or of material poverty as well. And with it being in Sagittarius, which is related to higher learning as well, and our philosophies, it's saying that, and with that also being guided by Mars, it's saying that we need to take the initiative to learn those spiritual philosophies and those spiritual lessons in order to help bring about the the end of this poverty. So again, it's also called faith restored so that we need to discover and again take those initiatives to to restore our faith. Pisces is also a very spiritual house. The 12th house is also a very spiritual house. It's not just about endings. So there is a lot of spirit energy which is going through this reading. And as we go through the different elements, what we're going to find is all of it relates back to the element of spirit. Okay, so let's, let's move right along and see what the element of fire has to say. The reading becomes more in-depth and complex as we bring out the different elements. It's a synastry reading, so we're going to be finding... All of these different placements, sometimes they form trines, just like in astrology, sometimes they form squares. Um, so, yeah, all right, let's, let's move right along. All right, so what is the element of fire being influenced by? So we have moved from the realm of the divine to the realm of fire. It is the human spirit, it's our drive and ambitions, and pretty much how are we going to put the spirit in motion. That is fire. Okay. Inverse page of pentacles. Hmm. Let's see. So what we have here is our fire is sort of being guided by 
let's say a a rebel without a cause. It's being guided by sort of um, an immature energy. And what, what's interesting is pentacles is coming up again. So from my perspective, it looks like these pentacles definitely represent more the spiritual wealth rather than the material wealth. And as the page of pentacles is is popping up, we're finding that our, our human ambitions, our, our drive, and the human spirit is sort of being guided by, let's say, a less than wise energy. So let, what do the astrology die have to recommend for this? Okay, Mars again. So we got Mars in Pisces in the seventh house. Okay, Mars in Pisces in the seventh house. A lot of Piscean energy, lots of Mars. All right. Okay. All right, let's re-roll for the Deccan. Three, which means we are in the first Deccan of Pisces. Okay, so the first Deccan of Pisces is the Lord of Abandoned Success. And, oh wow, <laughs> pretty interesting. Just as Saturn is guiding the third decan of Sagittarius, Saturn is also guiding the first decan of Pisces. So a lot of Saturnian energy, a lot of Piscean energy, and again, a lot of pentacles. We, we seem, and Mars, we seem to be having a, um, a very, a very sort of one-sided perspective to this. So again, with Mars being related to this, it's saying that we as individuals have to take on these energies. We need to not necessarily be guided by what the overall energy is trying to say, but take the initiative within ourselves, take control of our own destinies, and to to really reflect on how we behave and to to, to, to be able to manifest it for ourselves. It's not that anyone else is going to be taking our hand to, to guide us. We need to do it for ourselves. And with, with it coming up in the seventh house, which is ruled by Libra, we are also looking at, again, at our interpersonal relationships, generally with marriage or with coworkers or with peers. Uh, people that we sort of see ourselves on equal footing with. Um, it could also be people that we take advice from as well. So with it being the Lord of Abandoned Success, there's there's basically two outcomes. We can We can walk away from a bad situation or maybe we are leaving a bad situation too early. Now, in this case, since we have the inverted page of pentacles, which is influencing the, the element of fire, I would say it's time to walk away from a bad situation. And with it being in Libra, perhaps we have a bad situation in our interpersonal relationships, or we have something that needs to be addressed. So again, with it being guided by Saturn so much, and with it also calling from for for change too, we may look to restructuring our relationships with others and our relationship with the divine, especially when it comes to how we perceive our place and our progression and path in life. Because again, fire represents the human spirit. It represents it represents our drive, and it's very connected to the element of spirit as well. It's basically the first element which comes down from spirit. And fire is the element which binds all the other elements together, too, later on in the reading. All right, so let's move right along. And, okay, yeah, yeah, let's move right along. We almost have an opposition forming. Uh, not quite yet, though. Okay, so... Let's move to the element of air, which is represented by the swords. And let's see what air is being influenced by. Okay. The upside down or the inverted emperor. Okay. Very interesting. So, the inverted emperor. Um, 
it could suggest that we are experiencing a a a a lack of progress or our development, our progress is being stifled in some way. And with it relating back to the element of air, it has to deal with our communication and our intellectual pursuits. So it would make a lot of sense because, you know, we have over here in our interpersonal relationships a conflict happening, um, perhaps having something that we got to walk away from. We are also seeing a, a stifling in the intellect and in the communication. So what is the advice for the inverted emperor and the element of air? Okay, we have south node in Leo in the third house. <laughs> Lot of air energy. Okay, so third house is Gemini. Let's reroll for the Deccan. Eight. All right, middle Deccan. Middle Deccan of Leo south node. Okay, let me line this up real quick. Okay, so what we're seeing here is, again, a lot of communication issues. Um, Gemini being the third house, it is the house, or the third house being ruled by Gemini. It definitely, or, or it deals with communication mostly between our siblings, and here we have issues in communication in our interpersonal relationships or on relationships that we view as equal footing. So a lot of communication issues, a lot of, a lot of, let's say, misguidance or restructuring that we have to do. And with the south node popping up, it means that we need to look to our past lives, our, we, we need to look to the karmic lessons that we learned in order to guide us through this life. So that's, a, that's, that's pretty much what's happening right now. So the south node in, in Leo, in the middle decan, the middle decan of Leo is the Lord of Victory. And it's, it's pretty much saying to, to look to our past victories, to look to those past lessons, to look to those, those past, um, th those past lessons, which, which were successful to us or which, which lent us their success because we were successful in past lives and we were successful in the past. And the fact that we are experiencing this lack of progress in our communication in our current life, again, it's saying, what did you do in the past? Relearn those lessons and, and take it back to heart so that you can move on karmically in this life. And again, look towards our, our relationships towards siblings and towards, towards the friendships and people who are closer to us, just as what Libra is suggesting to us too. Okay, let's move right along. And, oh, let's see. So we almost have a couple of things forming. We almost have a trine here forming, but it needs to be a little bit closer for that. So everything is also just just kind of off a little bit. The, the energies haven't completely lined up, but they're almost there to form trines, squares, oppositions, and whatnot. But, I mean, that could be a good thing or a bad thing, depending on what the reading is. Okay, moving right along. Pentacles. So, we've had a lot of pentacles pop up with both spirit and fire. Let's see what pentacles is being guided by in the tarot. Okay. King of Wands. <laughs> All right. Okay, so the King of Wands guiding pentacles. Pretty much, there is... There is a, a sort of impending change. There, there, is, there is an endeavor which is likely to start in the material realm. And the material realm... So, let, let, me, let me rewind back a little bit. So, fire, or I'm sorry, air, is... If, if we were to look to Yggdrasil, the tree of life, air would be the branches. Again, according to... 
to to this particular belief system, the fire encompasses all the all the elements. Air is the upper branches of the tree of Yggdrasil. It's the divine coming to us and giving us our guidance. And the pentacles represents earth, and it also represents the trunk of Yggdrasil, which is our material body. Our bodies are the trunk of Yggdrasil. And it's saying it is it's saying that change is in the air. So we could probably be looking at change in how we relate to our bodies. We could look at change in how we relate to ourselves. Again, we have over here with with the spirit of fire, we have we have Mars popping up. So Mars is the individual, it's the warrior. And here it's saying with the king of wands, it's saying which again is is more fire energy and Mars also uh, represents fire. With all this fire energy happening, we could be looking at a lot of change in how we view ourselves as individuals too. And that change will also help to bring about this um, this restored faith and also this change in spiritual wealth, which seems to be on the horizon of manifesting. Okay, let's look at the advice that the astrology die have to give. All right. North node in Leo in the 11th house. Okay, a lot of south nodes and north nodes popping up. Let me move this over. Okay. And let me set this up real quick. Okay, let's reroll for the Deccan. 11. So we are in the third Deccan of Leo. So the north node is in the third Deccan of Leo in the 11th house. All right, so very interesting. So it's saying that within this life, and the third decan of Leo is the Lord of Valor, it is saying that in this life, we are standing our ground and we are we, we, we have fought the good fight, and we're still fighting the good fight within this life, which is represented by the North Node. Yeah, and, and that makes a lot of sense. I mean, times have been very challenging recently. So all of us were fighting the good fight, and with it being represented in Leo, with it being in Leo, it, it also um, refers back to our entertainment and to our pleasures. So, fighting the good fight... And also being able to to take it in stride, to be able to to turn the other cheek as well. It's it's interesting because the King of Wands also rules also rules the House of Leo, or at least the first two decans. So we have a lot of this Leo fire energy. It's saying, okay, I'm down, but I'm not out because I'm the king of the zodiac. I know how to handle this. And that's what we're going through in, in our lives. With it being in the house of Aquarius, what I'm getting for this in particular is that it has to relate to our online lives too. So a lot of us are probably being beaten up online. Maybe there's some cyber bullying or maybe... You know, there doesn't even have to be bullying. A lot of people could be experiencing a lot of negative energy from the things that they post, and they can feel the the undercover haters, you know, hating what they're posting. But it's all good, because here, it's all saying, take it in stride. And that will help us to reestablish our identities as well. Our identities in the material world. Okay, let's see. Okay, 120, 120, all right. Let's move right along to the element of water. All right. Okay, so last but not least is the element of water which is represented by the cups. The cups represent the roots of Yggdrasil, or I should say water represents the roots of Yggdrasil. It is tied into our emotions, our intuition, and it's it's tied into our ancestors as well. Um, a lot of the past energy. So let's see, what is water being guided by? Okay. Aha! The Wheel of Fortune. Excellent. Excellent. Let me put that over there. 
So we have water being guided by the wheel of fortune and and in it, it's an upright wheel of fortune. So it means that on an emotional level, good times are definitely in the works. And again, if we keep on manifesting this, it will help to bring about that faith restored in the spiritual realms. Um, let's see what advice the astrology die have to recommend for that. Okay, so Pluto in Taurus in the 10th house. Okay, wow, all right. So the 10th house, and let's, let's re-roll for the Deccan, seven. All right, so we are in the middle Deccan of the 10th house. So let's see, the middle Deccan of the 10th house is the Lord of Material Works. All right. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, I, I misread that. So the middle decan of Taurus is actually the, the Lord of Material Success. My bad. We are in the 10th house, but it's being guided by Taurus in the middle decan. Okay. So essentially what this is saying is in order to amplify the will of fortune, which is influencing our emotional natures, we need to focus on our career and status that is the 10th house of capricorn and that's that's what guides that's what guides capricorn is the is is career and status so with that also being guided by the middle decan of taurus it's saying and, and of course with, with pluto coming into being it's saying that there needs to be a transformation with how we view our materialism with how we view what really matters to us and what is important to us and what we're trying to even work for and when we begin to to really ask ourselves what matters to us in our lives well then we'll find the will of fortune influencing the cups as as amplifying itself as as creating even greater abundance again all of this leads back to what's happening in the spirit. So if we want to manifest and become more powerful with with the realm of the spirit, all of these needs uh, all of these need to be working with one another. Again, let's let's uh, recap. So we have the page of pentacles which was guiding or I should say the inverted page of pentacles which is guiding fire may not be the most it, it, it may not be the, the best way to approach it because it is kind of like a loose cannon or fire right now. And we need to go back and look at our interpersonal relationships with our equals. We need, And again, we need to take the initiative with that and look and consider very carefully whether it's a situation that we need to walk away from, which most likely because it's a page of pentacles, or if we are leaving a good thing. But again, with it being guided by the Page of Pentacles, it's most likely a situation we need to walk away from. The Emperor, we're having difficulty in communicating. However, look to the lessons of the past. Look to what we've learned. And again, it's also guided by Leo, so take it in stride, take, take that entertainment. Be a little bit more lighthearted in how we communicate and also how we how we relate to our close family members uh, the pentacles guided by the king of wands and leo again a lot of leo energy for that one and this particular reading seems to to point towards our online lives and really look towards those issues to to redefine who we are as individuals last but not least water which pluto guiding Taurus in the middle decan is saying reevaluate why reevaluate our motivations and why we work the way that we do to reestablish or to establish an even greater success with our emotional nature with our past with our ancestors and with the lower branches of the tree of Yggdrasil or I should say not lower branches the, the roots of the tree of Yggdrasil so, let's do a quick recap on if there's anything else. Um, actually, that's... Oh, 
No, no. Again, everything right here, like we don't, we don't have many many aspects forming. It's all it's all kind of there, but they're a little bit out of alignment with each other. Um, hmm. Yeah, it's it's not quite there. They're all a little bit of alignment without each other or from from each one another. So we have to look at these as individual cases. There's no major. There's no major energies forming to, to make them work in tandem with one another. All right, so that is this week's Elemental Synastry reading. I hope that, that you got something from this, and I hope to see you again at the next reading. Um, thanks for joining me today, and have a good day. I love you all. Bye-bye. Thank you for joining us on today's episode. If you resonate with what you are seeing or hearing, please take a moment to like, subscribe, and share Obleron's content. It really helps him to spread the word and to grow his channel and pages. Collective readings are posted Mondays on the High Priestess's Circle. Teachings are posted Wednesdays on the Magister's Sanctum, and the music from those episodes are posted Fridays on the Empress's Theater. Posters and merch related to Obleron's teachings are available at obleron.square.site. Music from the episodes is also available at obleron.bandcamp.com. Obleron is spelled O-B-L-Y-R-O-N. Lastly, don't forget to connect with the community on Discord. It's called the Magister's Council, and look for the invite link in the description boxes and profiles below. There are astrology and wellness bots, as well as games and discussion forums available for free. There is also an exclusive members-only section with additional content and live streams for subscribers. Obleron also takes inquiries for services through Discord. In case you missed anything, all the links are available in the description boxes and profiles below. Thank you everyone, and much love to all.